In the season two premiere of Blood Queens, Gabby DiMartino's homemade horror comedy series, we are treated to even more dark-sided mystery in the style of hit shows by Ryan Murphy, just without any of the style of hit shows by Ryan Murphy. If you love the larger-than-life characters in Scream Queens, then hold on to your hat for Gabby's community theater version, which has a lot fewer homosexual subplots and a lot more harsh fluorescent lighting. When we broke down the season one premiere of Blood Queens, I called it out for having less than stellar cinematography stale cornflake dialogue, and an audio mix that could summon the devil. Put on, dear, put on. But don't worry, because I am very happy to report that with season two, well, at least it sounds a little better. I don't like what anyone's saying, and the visuals look like they were shot on a Motorola Razor, but hey, I'm not too big to call out the improvements where I see them. It's just like I tell myself after every time I parallel park. At least you tried. Get ready for some more crunchy camera work, fresh out of the bag costumes, and enough backlighting to disorient a nocturnal animal in another Gabby installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello, television viewers. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into those movies, TV movies, and other internet content, and we figure out what, who, why. And mama, today we're going back to Gabby DiMartino. I looked at a bunch of her stuff, including her music videos and this show, uh, like in the winter. I guess it's still the winter. I live in LA, so it's hard to tell. But we have so much more to look at. I was recommended by somebody in the comments to just look at the premiere of each season of Blood Queen, so I think that's a great idea. Because I want to give fair due. It does seem like there were some improvements made to this content over time, but before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That lets me know that you want to see even more Blood Queen's breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. Uno dos. So turn on the bells, and that way you'll always be the first to know when I'm serving up something fresh. So, like I said, there's plenty of things that got better in her storytelling style, I think, with season two, but um, there's still a lot more that could probably have been improved. So I'm not intending any hate towards Gabby. I'm not trying to bully her, but I'm just always going to look at things and look at a movie and say, how am I going to help you step that movie's pussy up? Because season one, your pussy was on the ground. <laughs> oh, also, I have merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive content and bonus videos and watch parties and fun stuff. Season two, episode one is called Dead Girl for Dinner, which sounds cannibalistic, but don't you worry, there's nothing cannibalistic going on here except for Gabby cannibalizing ideas from other existing TV shows. But well, we're not here to talk about that. Aw, I didn't know Antiques Roadshow had seasonal depression. Also, I think we're good with those jumpy Blair Witch transitions. My right contact lens just flew out and stuck against the window. I think for a narrative piece like this, I prefer just simple cuts. When you do these weird transitions, to me it just is like a way of trying to add interest to what are generally uninteresting shots. I appreciate that she established the location, but it doesn't make each of these individual shots that interesting to look at. Like imagine if each one of these were composed like a beautiful photograph with a subtle movement, with beams of light being painted through. You know, then we hear that howling of the wind outside. You can really make it feel a little bit more immersive. We get a title card that says several months ago. How many months? You don't need to know, just several. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know now, the main problem with Blood Queens is the lighting. I wanna make sure you're ready. I'm ready. Ready to pay that power bill? Cause I think it's well past due, sweetheart. A low light scene is actually a lot more complicated than just turning down the lights. I can see in the mirror there that they've just turned on one corner lamp. I can't really see enough for this to be anything but frustrating. Like you kind of want to turn up the brightness on your computer screen. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> why did he attack her face like that? And why does their kiss sound like someone serving chicken Alfredo at a buffet? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I can't stop thinking about your grandparents. They're downstairs. They're probably gone. They were there when I came in. Yeah, that was an hour ago. I haven't heard anything, so... Well, I haven't seen anything. Your face looks mysterious as the dark side of the moon. 
be a man. We must be swift as a coursing river. With all the force of a great typhoon. With all the strength of a raging fire. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. This whole thing about her being like, well, I haven't heard my grandparents, so they're probably gone. Imagine if you showed us this instead of telling this. Like, why not show the boyfriend coming in and greeting two old people and being like, hi there. And then he goes upstairs and this happens. It would take the same amount of time. Also, your grandparents are just gonna go out in the middle of this storm? I don't get. Nanny? Pappy? We're in the kitchen draining our abscesses, dear. What do you want? Are you getting f***ed up there? <laughs> The backlighting, as I said on this, is so frustrating. We see this light streaming out from the bedroom behind her, leaving her face with no detail for the camera. We need splashes of directional light. You could make it look like it's coming through the windows. You could even use, like if you really wanted to go there, a projector to make it look like snowfall outside. And just a soft glow hitting her face as though it's like from some ambient light in the room or downstairs. Ooh, now we build the suspense with those same mysterious synthesizer tones that were dated even back in 1997 when Goosebumps used them. Despite some lackluster lighting, they do get off a few semi-creative shots here. Nanny, happy. She's like, listen, I don't feel like coming down these spiral stairs all night, so you better keep those life alert buttons handy. I'm about to lose my virginity and I will not have your heart attacks overshadowing it like they did with my grad week. So then this character, who we later find out is named Becca, gets back to straddling her boyfriend and we pan out and we see that there's no one downstairs. They're trying to do like a really impressive long take here, but there's some confusing flashes of lights and then we just go into complete darkness. Like they didn't seem to light the outdoors at all, so it just looks black and white. I'm just not sure that shot was successful. Was that supposed to be blood? Or did someone just like attach a GoPro to their front of their snowblower? I want to understand what's being set up here. Did the grandparents get killed and she didn't realize it? Did they just run out of this open door? Like it's, it's literally not clear. I don't know what's on camera. I guess I'm still confused. Who is that guy jumping out at? Just the camera? A meaningless jump scare like this would be annoying even if it were actually scary, you know? But it didn't even make me jump. So I'm not sure what this cold open even means or what it's relating to. So we're off to a great start. Let's see if they've added any new flair to that opening title sequence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of West Mesa High's production of Legally Blonde the Musical. Did we really need eight cuts of them walking out on the balcony and turning around? Like, we get it. Your contour doesn't work as well from the side. We get a lot of the same, like, body movements that they had in the opening sequence of season one, where they're like, ooh, now look to the right. Ooh, now one foot in, choo. One step, two times, jump, jump, jump. That new girl is like, my hair doesn't really move. Can I still be in the show? <laughs> we told you we were doing hair flips. Why the moose? We got a lot of the same girls. The V squad is back. They shot in this blue closet area at some point, but I'm so annoyed that they never once leveled the camera. You can see those horizontal lines from the seam in the wall. Like they're crooked for each one of these blue wall shots. <laughs> He said, let me just adjust this shirt real quick, make sure they see all the creases. Mother, that garment is freshly unfolded from the plastic bag it was shipped out of the polyester factory in. Can we get a garment steamer on set? For once in my life, I just wanna steam the fabrics. If you're not gonna iron your clothes, I'm gonna throw you on the moon. <laughs> I'm glad to know that this has inspired a lot of you out there to order garment steamers for your own home and personal use, because the problem with creasing fabrics in this country is at a magnitude that I would consider on par with global warming. Maybe the planet should get a little warmer, relax some of those creases, you know what I'm saying? Some humidity, just kidding. Recycle your polyester garments and buy something real. So we see the V squad waking up. They're each like their own individual characters that, you know, are so original, except they were stolen from Screen Queens. Oh, and Gabby's character is still trying to position herself as like the queen bee. She's like a heartless, cruel girl, but it still doesn't read well as I don't, it just feels a little, what's the word? Badly acted. Seriously? Your birth certificate is an apology letter from the condom factory. Goodbye. Well, your birth certificate was written on the back of a Victoria's Secret coupon that your mom found under her car seat. So have fun with your new pubic lice, okay, sweetheart? If we're gonna be reading each other for breakfast, you better come hungry, sis. You need to go wash your lace before you come talk to me like this so early in the morning. 
this is Nash. A few months ago, she was a pretty bad bitch and somehow managed to rob a millionaire. The dumbass she stole from never canceled his cards, and so now we're filthy rich. Those styrofoam wig heads do not indicate extreme wealth to me. They look like they came from the back of a broom closet. Also, how is using stolen credit cards the same as being filthy rich? Like, those are gonna max out eventually, and then you'll just be filthy. That girl from the first scene is still here. I don't know what happened to that guy she was sleeping with, but she gives plenty of exposition to let us know what's happened over the last few months. I don't know, Forrest. I really need the money for college, and Gabby says I can still live here. And you know how hard it is to find housing when you're the secret witness being interviewed on an episode of Dateline. Even a piece of white poster board would have helped bounce some of the natural light back onto her face and made this a better looking shot. Little Mama has had no light on her face since this episode started. She could have lizard scales, and I wouldn't know. Hot pink or orange? Those are both lovely shades of Chief Nash, but you're rich now. If being rich means I have to share a bathroom with two other people, then I don't want it. Instead, I'm gonna take that stolen money and use it to start a charity that ensures every gay man has a private restroom to douche in. And that's my American promise. As we know about the V Squad is they tend to just hate other people, especially Gabby's character. She's like, oh, that innocent person over there, such a piece of shit. It just makes Gabby look like she has some sort of superiority complex and is very insecure. You guys want to hear a joke? What if you woke up one morning and like Becca? <laughs> well, the four of you already look remarkably similar, so your joke lacks a subversion of expectations for me. She's like, that girl doesn't have 12 inches of unstyled hair extensions hanging across her back like a dead trout. <laughs> <laughs> So far, season two is 40% face acting and 60% the sound of high heels on hardwood floors. They're like, anyway, girls, new year, new us. You need to get you some moleskin, which is like a soft-sided adhesive that a lot of sound departments use, and put it on the bottom of them shoes. If you want to add heel sounds back in post, you can do it in a way that doesn't sound like a stampede. We get some deeper insight into the level of insanity that this Gabby character has written into her. I take each minion into consideration weekly. On a scale of one to 10, above a five, they're in. Below a five, they're out. But when they're out of your squad, aren't they still just your roommates? Like this seems like a lot of extra work. Gabby is a queen bee to the point where it makes her seem crazy. It like goes beyond making her seem really cool and actually just obsessive over other people's behavior. Like learn to cross stitch. This is a lot of extra work for you. By now we're almost seven minutes into this show and it's just setting up that they live in a house. That's all we got. her drink that orange juice like they both rinsed their false eyelashes in it last night. They spent so much time on this. I thought it actually mattered to the story, like that orange juice was gonna be important, but nope, it was just a full length continental breakfast breather in the middle of the story. Ah! You say stuck up, I call it having standards. Did you spread your cellulite on this or something? Okay, it's not a good joke because it doesn't make sense. I mean, a joke needs to make a certain amount of sense to really be funny. For example, she could have been like, ugh, ugh, if I wanted something old and curdled for breakfast, I could have just looked at your thighs in that skirt. Now that's how you make fun of your maid, okay? Mm. Just saying, did you spread your cellulite on that? Is just, it doesn't make enough sense for it to be funny right away. So it's just like a meme comment. Also, why is she talking to me about having standards when she was just sitting down to eat a loaf of raw bread for breakfast? Like that's full on peasant behavior. The only people bitter about squads are those who aren't in one. And the only thing harder than getting in a squad is staying in. Yes, you love that drone shot, don't you? I also love that she's like, the only thing harder than getting in a clique is staying in a clique. I think it's harder to like, just like file your taxes or go grocery shopping. Those things actually take Effort. Speaking of which, I have to go grocery shopping after this. Double mask, everyone. If you're not wearing two masks, you're not here to party. Anyway, now the V Squad are college girls. We love an education. No cell phones in class. Come on, we talked about this. That's Gabby, the girl I've been telling you about how her and her friends are trying to run out my grandparents' mansion. I actually haven't told you this yet though, but she's trying to buy it off of me. Gabby said, yes, we'll take the whole house. Just put it on this stolen credit card, will you? Like that's not gonna work. And yet still, the more obvious problem is how much Gabby struggled to find male extras for this scene. Bloop, just one. Becca is talking to her friend. I think this girl's name is Florist. <laughs> I don't know, Florist. How have you been doing since, well, everything? I miss Nan Paps so much. 
but I'm hoping that they'll come back soon. I don't get it. She's like, I really hope my grandparents come back soon, unless there are any other offers on their spacious five bedroom home. Like they've only been missing for several months now. This girl's been taking photos for Zillow. I'm sure they'll come back soon. I sure hope so. Did they have to bury a microphone at the very bottom of that Jansport? I am, however, relieved that they're using external mics for season two. That's definitely a better auditory experience. What about you? Where are you gonna live? Would you move back to Florida with your parents and transfer schools? Why is this shot framed so that I'm mostly looking at that random background girl in her monster high Frankenstein heels? Also, if this girl's parents are alive and in Florida, why wouldn't they be the ones who inherit this mansion? I hate to say it, but the stakes are not high enough for me. Like this girl just can't afford to go to college unless she's renting out this house. You have both parents who have another home in Florida. What's their deal? Why can't they pay for college or take care of selling this house so that you can go to school? I need her parents to be dead or something, like to have some traumatic background. Maybe one of them's in prison. Make it make sense. Just give me the sense. Put it in my palm and I'll eat it like an M&M. The V Squad actually invited me to a special dinner tonight. Oh, like a initiation dinner of some sort? Oh, an initiation, we say. Oh, wow, smashing. <laughs> so anyway, Becca is invited to this initiation dinner that night. She's still on the fence about whether she's gonna sell the house to the girls. Meanwhile, Gabby's character is still grading her friends. Minus one, Nash. Do I get a plus five for holding your hair over the toilet? Yeah, if I lose a pound. Hmm, do I go after the tasteless eating disorder joke or the fact that girl number three can't stop hitting that microphone with her hairbrush? That night at dinner, it's more awkward framing. We just get two shots of the dinner table, the three girls on one end and Becca on the other side. So it feels really awkward. Like we need at least one wide shot to establish them all at the table, I think. Or maybe some movement so we can see like around or over the shoulder. Give, let me feel like I'm in the scene. But we also get a glimpse upstairs at the attic where we have these two other characters who I might know more about if I watch more than the first episode of season one, but you know, it's fine. I know that they're secretly there this is going really well, but can we trust them? We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Like, are they intentionally finding camera angles that distort people's facial features? Half of these shots look about as flattering as ATM security camera footage. I got yelled at by a teacher for this once in my high school video class and I never forgot it again. So I'm gonna tell you without yelling, but you gotta put your camera eye level. It's just gonna make everything look so much more professional. It's an easy detail to miss when you're starting out, but you got a tripod. It should not be looking down at your person. Try and get it eye level. Lenses have a lot of distortion that the eyes don't really pick up when, you know, it's framed properly properly, but it can easily go from, you know, normal portrait to fish eye lens if you're not looking. While the girls are downstairs, Gabby is basically trying to win over Becca so that she will sell the house, but something smells weird too. So Gabby is like blaming it on this other girl. It smells like a dumpy gas station bathroom in here. Becca, since you're studying medicine, can you please find a cure for Allie's butthole? It's shocking that even in 2021, doctors have not found a cure for the human butthole. That's why this weekend I'm hosting a live virtual telethon called Fill Up My Hole, a drive for the cure. You can RSVP at nicholas.com slash my butt. <laughs> so Gabby basically is like, listen, we could really use a fourth member of the V squad. So I know you're on the fence about signing this over to us, but it will really be like our house. So what do you say? It's ours. It's the V squad, you dumb bitch. Last time I saw something that looked like you, I flushed it. Thanks for the signature though. You tricked me. Now all I have is the millions of dollars you owe me for this house. Also imagine fully signing your house over to someone with the assumption that they would share it with you for some reason. Everything about this is so weird. The framing of people like going from a shot where they're standing down to standing up, it's a lot. Too many cuts generally, the music is getting too loud. The scene feels a little messy. I'd slap you so hard right now if it didn't smell like dead carcass in here. You can't slap her because of the smell, but you can all eat rotisserie chicken around it. That's interesting. The girls realize like there's blood somewhere and uh-oh, they look under the table and find the source of that rotten smell. <laughs> These girls were using that rotten corpse as a footrest this whole night and not one of them looked under the table. Just like the end of the season one premiere, it ends with sort of this mysterious murder that shocks the girl. And then we get this cliffhanger upstairs from the gentleman. I think I'm ready to meet our killer. James Warner, looking forward to doing business with you. 
Ah, the always awkward three-person handshake. Why is this footage grainier than a whole wheat cracker? I'm telling ya. You gotta turn some light on your subject and not just directly behind them where I can see your camera operator's shadow. But hey, at least we're back immersed in the story. What do you guys think of uh, season two of Scream Queens? Actually, Blood Queens is the real name. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you see the improvements in the audio? Also, check out my merch and my Patreon for exclusive content and bonuses. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns on Gabby's content, but most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we freshly stabbed a new body. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for getting into the mystery with me today. I will see you next time.